All right, now forget science fiction. The U.S. scientists who created the world's first living robot say the little guys can now reproduce. Yes, reproducing robots. Everything I just said is real. The little blobs, known as xenobots, were formed from the stem cells of the African clawed frog and were unveiled last year after experiments showed that they could move, work together in groups, and even self-heal. And now the researchers that developed them, who are from the University of Vermont, Tufts University, and Harvard University, say they've discovered an entirely new form of biological reproduction that is different from any animal or plant known to science. Well, joining us to break this down is Professor Michael Levin. He is the director of the Allen Discovery Center at Tufts University, and he's also the co-lead author of this new research. So, you know, first of all, most people think of robots as, as made of metals and ceramics. So how do these organisms fit into that category? Yes, one of the most important aspects of this technology is that it's going to force us to come up with better definitions of what is a robot, what is an organism. You know, we thought we knew because in the past robots were made of metal and came off a factory, but that's actually not a great definition of robotics. And so the important thing about this is that we are learning how to communicate with cellular collectives to get them to do the kinds of things we need them to do, let's say for regenerative medicine, for engineering, and so on. So this has elements of robotics, and it certainly has elements of the plastic city of natural life. Right, so they, they serve humans to, to a certain extent. Um, what do these xenobots actually do then? And, and what makes their form of reproduction so unique? Well, at the moment, they can do a number of things. Uh, they move on their own, so they don't need to be uh, actuated externally to move around. They can self-heal from certain kinds of injuries. And uh, as you saw uh, in this in this latest study, <clears throat> they're able to actually uh, make uh, copies of themselves when provided with other cells in their environment. And this is all part of discovering the natural creativity and plasticity of cells, the cells that are put into an entirely new situation. You know, these are normally skin cells that are meant to sit on the outside side of a tadpole and keep out the bacteria. And when put in this new configuration by themselves, they figure out a new way to replicate themselves. And so this is, uh, this is uh, the, us learning about the plasticity of life and the new things that uh, cells are capable of and using artificial intelligence and machine learning to help us understand. Wow. Okay. So what could the applications be in the future of, you know, this, these xenobots? <laughs> it's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. There are there are two two broad areas of positive impact that are going to come out of this. One is the eventual better design of useful synthetic living machines. So so, so specifically uh, bots that do things like uh, micro sculpt tissues for transplantation, maybe clean up the environment, um, maybe do things inside the body eventually, like chase down cancer cells and and wow. put down pro regenerative molecules. But there's also there's also a bigger picture here, which is that this is an incredibly convenient, uh, tractable, and safe platform for learning about how collections of cells decide what they're going to build. And if we had an answer to that question, basically most of the problems of biomedicine would be solved. So birth defects, traumatic injury, aging, cancer, all of these things uh, could be solved if we knew how to tell cells what it is that they should build. And this is a kind of sandbox platform where we're going to use artificial intelligence to crack that code and to learn to control what it is that cells build. Wow, it's fascinating. Okay, so last very quick question. Uh, the prospect of self-replicating technology obviously sparks some concerns here, right? Well, uh, compared to all the other self-replicating technology that already exists, which is bacteria, viruses, and and, and mm -hmm. everything else, this is this is incredibly safe. These are these are frog skin cells. I mean, frogs shed skin into lakes all the time naturally, and these cannot self-replicate except in a very confined environment with a very specific type of uh, type of water, with cells being provided for them by us. They have a natural lifespan of about a week to ten days, after which they biodegrade. This is uh, this is an extremely safe technology.